I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo and welcome to the Eurasia Animal Park. Yes, we have a sloth there. He's absolutely beautiful and today we're going to build an entire area for him. We are starting a beautiful new area today called the Indian Forest. It's going to feature our brand new sloth bear along with a tiger temple and it's going to go here. This is the exit from Amazonia. You can see the Jaguar Dome in the background there and it currently joins on to this empty path leading out of the desert house. They meet up here and this is where the new area is going to go. I cannot wait to show you the sloth bear properly at the end of this video. It is absolutely incredible. I have never been impressed with the bears in this game, but Frontier have knocked it out of the park with this one. And what we're going to build for him is an area inspired by the Jungle Book. Um, not really the kind of thing I would normally do, but I was looking at some production art from the Jungle Book, inspired obviously by the fact that we've got a sloth bear um, and along with the Bengal tiger. Um, that is two of the main characters from the Jungle Book and some of the um, pre-production artwork for that film was absolutely incredible and I wanted to um, replicate that in a more sort of realistic setting and that is what's going to inspire this area. My original plans for India in this zoo was just to have a modern take on the classic tiger temple but I wanted to do a realistic ruined Indian temple uh, with a tiger living in it. But as soon as Frontier announced the Eurasia pack, I decided to expand my plans for the area. So what we're going to build today is a really, really sizable habitat and entrance for our Indian forest. It's going to feel, if I get it right, like one huge habitat that has parts that the sloth bear can access, parts that the guests can access, parts that no one can access that just look really nice and I really want to make an immersive foresty jungle kind of feel and um, these trees are going to play a big part in that so we've got these strangler figs here we're going to be joining some of them together to make even more sort of gnarly big trees than we have and this one that's currently floating in midair is going to be the first centerpiece that guests see so I'm making a pile of rocks here which is going to be combined with some mulch and soil to sit the tree that's currently floating on and that extends out over the little sort of pond or lake that you can see behind it we're going to have a small ruined Indian temple in there and then as this path winds up through all the trees and the ferns and the rocks there's going to be views down into two habitats for the sloth bear the way I'm designing it is the way that you would design them in real life if you wanted them to breed. So we're going to have one really big habitat and one slightly smaller habitat. And when you've got a male and female, they're going to be able to access both of them. And then once the female has had cubs, the male will be moved into the smaller habitat and the female and the cubs would live in the larger habitat and the access between the two of them would be removed um, until the cubs had grown up and then been moved to another zoo, released into the wild, whatever the zoo was gonna do with them. So we'll get onto building the habitats themselves in a minute, but first I wanna build the entrance area where the guests are gonna come in. I want them to be immersed in this sort of Indian forest straight away. And we're gonna be building loads of elements here that are gonna feature in the habitats as well. So everything ties together really nicely. We're also gonna sneak some giant forest scorpions in here as well. Another Indian animal that's um, really impressive although a lot smaller than the sloth bear. What we're doing here is extending the roots on this tree all the way down to the path and down to the grass on the other side. So it looks like there's just this huge gnarly tree that's growing out of the ground on this mass of roots. We're gonna use pretty much every one of the strangler fig root pieces in this tree and just keep working on it until it looks perfect. And then we're gonna cover it in vines as well for that jungly feel and then stick a tamarind tree into it and use more roots to cover up the join just to make it look even more interesting and a bit less like one of the um, basic trees. That's starting to look really good. We'll put some epiphytes on it as well just to complete the jungle vibe. And then we'll move on to the little garden that surrounds the path. So you can see the path inclines here from the entrance of the area up to where the first viewing gallery for the bears is gonna be. Um, we're going to fill all of this in with various different ferns and jungle plants and some of the tropical plant panels which um, I like to sink into the floor. We'll put in some of the crazy strangler root arrangements from the otter habitat into the ground just to add texture. And then we're going to add one of the brand new plants from the new updates um, into the game. Really, really good for ground cover these. And speaking of the update, it comes with a hundred or so new pieces because every single thing you saw in the gift shop, in the update announcement, comes as a separate piece 
as well as being in the gift shops. They are amazing. We are definitely going to be doing a gift shop episode soon because I cannot wait to start playing around with those. We're going to be using a mixture of the Indian and the Indonesian pieces from the tropical pack to build this area because most of the Indian pieces aren't flexicolor and they've all got that sort of bright orangey yellow color which um, is found in some temples in India but it, like this one here but it is just a little too saturated for me. Everything looks like it was built yesterday, which isn't really the vibe I'm going for. So when we can get away with it, we'll use these pieces, but mostly we're gonna be covering them up with the few flexicolor pieces that we have in the India pack and some of the Indonesian pieces as well. This is one of the flexicolor ones here. So what we're gonna do is clone this all around the pillar here and mix it in so we get a mixture of a sort of faded rock look and the brightly colored look of the Indian pieces. And we'll be doing that throughout this area. As we copy it around, you can see the textures and the colors start to melt together and get us a really interesting look, which is what we want. Now with a brand new area, we need a sign to tell people what it is. So that's what we're gonna build here. So I've used one of Ricey's amazing fonts to make a little um, text saying Indian Forest. And then we're gonna do something which is kind of a classic Indian vibe. I saw this a lot when I was in India, um, which is the sort of old school movie poster vibe of ripped posters um, and where the colors slightly offset from each other. Uh, we're gonna make something fun like that using the Indian posters from the game and then we'll clone the text because I want to get that look where the um, printing is slightly offset and slightly inaccurate. Uh, not that Indian film posters look like that now, <laughs> but back in the sort of 50s and 60s, that's the kind of vibe we're going for here. Really colorful. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think it's got a really authentic Indian vibe. Right, onto the scorpions. What we're gonna do is just drop an exhibit box in here and then we'll just rearrange the rock formation that we made earlier to highlight certain parts of the exhibit use the enrichment items in the exhibit to encourage the scorpions to uh, stand in one particular spot put a light in to make sure it's brightly lit a few finishing touches and there we go there's our little scorpion exhibit nice and simple just adds an animal for the visitors to see on their way up to see the bears and speaking of the bears let's get started on their habitat we need a lot of terrain changes in here to keep the bears enriched and we also need to join the two habitats together with an underground tunnel which means it's time for franchise masters the quickest way to make an underground tunnel is to dig down to the depth that you want go to the path menu turn on tunneling hold down control so you can put the path in the hole that you've just made and then just lay your path where you want the tunnel to be and let the game dig out the terrain for you. It is so much easier than trying to do this using the terrain tools, believe me. Then you can fly in and remove the pieces of path. And there you go, just do a bit of smoothing later and you've got yourself a tunnel. With the tunnel built, we can start putting the rest of the paths for the guests in. So we'll continue this around here, which is where it's gonna go down into the rest of the area for the tigers. And then we'll start building the paths for the viewing galleries we're gonna have three dedicated viewing points for the guests, which will offer them views into the two different water features in the habitats and a more general overview of the area as well. Sloth bears can use the um, beaver pool and the elephant pool as well. And the animations for them are amazing. I'll show you those at the end. And then we need to get some walls in to make sure these bears can't get out. So we're gonna use the rock formation again. Um, now this looks really cool, but um, I'm pretty sure a sloth bear could climb this pretty easily. So on the inside of it, we need to line it with this smooth concrete so that they can't climb it. It needs to be three meters tall to keep them in. So we're gonna use this four meter piece and then bury it into the ground slightly. So we got a really smooth inside to the rocks and then the outside can look really cool. And then we need to do various things to blend this in so it doesn't look as um, prison-like as it does here. So we'll put some decals on it. We're going to put some plants and roots and things like at the top. The one that we're making here is circular to give us a nice smooth look. And then we're going to build a straight one as well later. You want to try and avoid any sort of right angles in habitats uh, in case the animals hurt themselves on them. One more vine in here. Uh, I think this will be ready to start putting around the habitat. So we'll put one in here just next to the keeper gate. This is the path here where the first viewing point is going to be. We'll copy this along here to join it up with the keeper gate and then we'll start putting these straighter ones in as well and just keep placing these in until we get the the right kind of size for the habitat it's about two and a half thousand meters i think altogether the idea being that it can be split into a just under 2000 meter habitat and a just over 500 meter habitat which is well within the recommended amounts for the bears 
um, IRL anyway. I think in the game, one bear needs about 750, something like that. But this would work nicely. I'm not actually gonna be removing the bears at any point. That would be um, very difficult to achieve in franchise mode. I just want it to look like um, it would work IRL. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already so you can see the rest of the zoo. Let me know in the comments what other animals from the Eurasia Animal Pack you wanna see in the zoo. I think it's safe to say the Wolverine and the Swan will be making an appearance later on as they both fit perfectly into areas that I've already got planned. Let's move on to the first of the water features. Oh mama, this gave me so many problems that you would not believe. What I wanna do is get some logs going over the water that the bears can climb on. Now, if you've ever tried to combine climbing and water in Planet Zoo, you will have some idea of the amount of pain that this took me through. We're gonna be visiting this numerous times throughout the rest of this video, and you'll even see it changing in the cinematics as I try and get it to work. We finally get there, although it's gonna take some more decorating to get it perfect, I think. And speaking of decorating, this is the first viewing point that the guests will get to. They're mostly gonna be glass, but this one is gonna be mesh, just so we get some sort of uninterrupted open air viewing. So we're just gonna put some mesh pieces in and then some stone pieces to line it and give it support. And this will give guests the perfect view into the bears walking across the water or swimming around in the water. So we'll use just this one piece really to tie this in to the rest of the area and then make adjustments to the rocks so we get the perfect little peek through that guests can come into. The other viewing galleries will be much bigger than this. This is just a little, uh, a little peek. Let's move on to the first of the main viewing areas. So once we've rearranged these rocks around the path I put in, we're gonna design a glass viewing area here. So we're gonna use a modified version of the pillars from the entrance along with some of the modern glass pieces and just get a really simple um, Indian looking arrangement so that the focus is on the habitat rather than the viewing area. Put some bricks along the bottom to give it support. Want to make sure that this is a really comfortable height for the guests. You don't want the top of the glass to be anywhere near their eye line really so you get a really sort of uninterrupted view as you look through it. We'll put another one of the handful of flexicolor Indian pieces on the top here. These flowers look really nice. And that's it done. We can take it now and move it to where we want it to go. We'll put it just at the edge of the path here, line it up with that rock, and then we can start moving it and curving it around this whole area of path here. I want it to be pretty long so we can accommodate a lot of guests here. This is sort of the main view of the habitat really. And then we're gonna have another one of these on the other side as well. Won't show you me building that because it's, uh, it's just the same thing again, but you'll see it in the cinematics. We need some shelter for the bears as well. So we're gonna drop this rock archway in and just remove some of the rocks here and put a shelter behind it and then we'll recolor one of the PVC doors so it blends in nicely. And then it's time for landscaping and foliage. So we're gonna use one of the stalactites colored to look like mud, and then just random rotate this all the way around the edge of the pool. And I'm gonna use a lot of them so we get away from the slightly sort of lumpy look that you get and get it to look nice and smooth around here. So we get a really realistic edge of a pond kind of look. Uh, this, I imagine, would be sort of molded concrete or something like that. Um, otherwise, the bears are just going to destroy it, basically. A bit of terrain painting, and that's starting to look nice. And then we'll get the beaver pool enrichment in. This is a great piece. All the animals that use this have unique animations. Uh, looks really good when they use it. Um, it is very, very temperate looking. So we're going to cover up some of the birch trees with some palms and ferns and things like that and make sure it blends in nicely. We'll line the walls of the tunnels with concrete and do some more work on those so that they look realistic. And then the final thing that we're gonna do is get a load of foliage in here to start getting that jungle vibe going. We'll start with some bamboo to cover up some of the straighter part of the walls. We'll put some custard apple trees in and they look nice. And we're gonna line all of the walls with these, just the very ends of these scavola bushes so that it blends in nicely with the terrain. We'll do the same in the other habitat and that's the build done. I'm so happy with the cinematics you're about to see. I'm not even gonna talk for the first 20 seconds. Enjoy. I 
told you the animations were good in the Beaver Wars feature. Love that. Really happy with this habitat. I think it needs a bit more work though. I'm gonna be honest with you, trying to build the entrance and the habitat along with the normal episodes of San Bernardino Zoo was quite the struggle. I haven't slept very much this week, um, but I'm really happy with this as a starting point. It could do with a little more detailing and oh my God, the struggle with the climbing. You will see some shots of it and you will see various different logs and things pop in and pop out as I try and get it to work. I have finally got it working. It just needs a little bit more decorating to really sit it in, but we're gonna go with the Planet Zoo logs. How cute do the bears look swimming around in here? The fur on these guys is absolutely insane. I feel like Frontier's fur simulation gets better with every DLC they release. That was the first set of logs. This is the second. We're currently on to set of logs number three, and I'll probably show you those next week once it's all perfected. This is where we started today, and this is where we are now. That was a lot of work. I will see you on Saturday for the second part of our Savannah build where we're adding the giraffes and the zebras and completing that area. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to it up on screen in a second. We'll take a quick look at the members monolith as well because something amazing has happened. We have filled it. Thanks to Adrian Victoriano, there is no more space on the front, so we're gonna have to move around to the other side and you will see that next week. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the Eurasian Animal Pack. Bye.